All right. Got it. Ooh, baby, in the mail. Yes, indeed. Nice. Hey, man. What you got there? Got a new computer? Yeah, it's the uh, it's the M2 Mac Mini. Oh, big YouTuber got 3,000 subscribers. Is that a pro? Cause you're a pro man. Is that a pro? Huh? Nah, it's just the base model. Oh, um, <laughs> oh man, you got the loser cruiser. Low and slow, man. Slow and cheap like you are, right? Slow and cheap like. No, don't, don't say it. Don't. Okay, man. You got the 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 cheap base box. That's cool. That's cool. Cheap. And base. Wait, 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 wait. I did get the 16 gig of RAM. So I bumped it up from the eight to the 16 because I got priorities. I got I got things I need to do. Oh, okay. Okay, 16 gigabytes, pretty sweet there. What about that 256 SSD? <laughs> How's that treating you? Treating you well, nice and fast. Yeah, I know I know it's slow, but it still gets the job done and that's what's important, right? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> They say time is money. Yep, with all that, if you got the pro, if you got the pro, how much time would you save? How much money you could make after that? What would you do with all that time if you got the pro? Well, with all that extra time, uh, maybe play Call of Duty, something like that, so I can make some money off of that. You wanna play that more? Great, that's what you need. More, more Call of Duty, God. Hey, welcome back to the channel. Scott from Scott Reviews. I do speaker reviews, camera reviews, and once in a while I venture into computers. Why? Because we all use them. So we all have our own opinions about them. We have our own needs of what we need, what we don't need, what we think we need. What we think we need is the biggest, pretty much one of the main things I want to discuss is what we think we need and what we really need for what we get. Let's go. So, let me tell you about my setup and why I picked up the Mac Mini uh, just recently, the M2. Uh, I have the MacBook Pro here. This is the MacBook Pro from 2020. MacBook Pro, 16 inch, 2021, 16 gigs of RAM and one terabyte of memory. Expensive machine for me, treated myself. I love this device. I love the sound that it produces as a laptop. Fast, does the job more than well capable for what I needed to do. Where this went was a half desktop plugged into my monitor and then once in a while I take it on the road. Now I also have, if you've seen my other videos, an M1 MacBook Air, 16 gigabyte, one terabyte. Uh, that I got right when the M1s first came out. Love that one. Very capable machine. Does all what I need to do most of the time. It hardly ever has trouble, which is crazy. But it's small, it's great for travel, but nothing like when you do Final Cut Pro, it's really squunched down that 13 inch screen. So I don't, it's not my favorite to use to do videos, but you can do it in a bind to get things done. So that was the one I would take on the own to work, on the road, uh, in my backpack, that kind of thing. And then this bad boy stayed at home as the base station for the house. Now I have two daughters, both once in high school, once about to go in high school. So we're getting more and more, I see recently, they're getting into more project homeworks where they need to use the computer to build their PowerPoints, their whatever they're doing for school. Not just their own little small, um, they use a Chromebook for school. So what was happening was every time I go downstairs to use the computer, my daughters would be on it. And they would be like, doing homework. And when you say doing homework, it trumps me from doing videos like this or doing whatever on the computer because homework is more important than what I'm doing. My wonderful, beautiful MacBook Pro was stuck on the base station while my kids had homework all around it as they did their stuff, which is great. I paid for it. It's doing its job. Family's happy. Wife's happy. I'm happy, which gives me a little more ammunition to say, you know what? I kind of want my laptop back. So maybe we could get something small as a home computer that just sits there. All of a sudden the Mac Mini M2 came along and I was like, perfect timing. I think this is opportunity. 
the opportunity came, I got online and how we all do when we get online, look at Apple products. We check out the cool pictures. We start getting into how to build and then we start going, hmm, maybe I need a little bit more. But I was like, no, this is gonna be a home computer that my kids are gonna use for basic computing. There's no need to spec this thing out to do 4K, 8K video, that kind of thing. This is gonna be a like, base station computer. So I saw the price for $5.99, I'm like, nice. And I said, hey, ed education discount. My kids are both in, in high school, about to go to, one's about to go to college, that qualifies. So I looked into pricing for that, down to $5.99. So I looked at the eight gig and the 256 memory, and I was like, hmm, I may want to use this computer to do editing on it sounds like an awesome computer why can i do if i want to do editing on this computer why not maybe not use maybe use this one because i love using base stations at home maybe use this and then use this guy on the road and let the macbook air be the side computer that the other daughter can use to do home projects if they both need to use computer all right if i'm gonna do that then i need 16 gigs of ram i need to at least have that so it doesn't buffer out on me in Final Cut Pro. Give me the old beach ball. But what about 256? I'm like, eh, you know what? I I'm gonna get a SSD. I have a T7 drive I can use to put that on the side, plug it in the back, always there. So it's always putting all my documents, all my videos will go on that. That'll be fine. But we're good. Good. Place the order, got it in, and I set it up. I did some testing. Um, let me just show you, let me just talk about, and I'll show you on the screen some benchmarks that I kind of got before. Uh, so on Cinebench uh, 23, uh, for the single core, I got 1643. And then for the dual core, a multi-core, I got uh, 8614. So it's about what I'm seeing online, everybody else is getting, it's about that general area that we're seeing. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and run the Cinebench 23 for the, the Mac M1 Pro. Uh, and see what that comes out to. But let me talk about something else while that runs. Uh, I did run the SSD, uh, and I put it on a screen here of what I got for the SSD. For the first round, I got I got 1432 and 1536. On this baby here, I got 5330 and 5310. So, wow. I'm fast as boy still fast as boy come get some <laughs> i don't think you have any idea how fast i really fast what that's almost five times faster roughly four times faster so uh, pretty impressive uh, on this guy here for the ssd it is a one terabyte uh, and it owns 256 so we know all that story right 256 has one little slot this guy probably has a couple different slots so it's kind of hitting them all and making it a lot faster all right, another test that I did in Final Cut Pro. So I took a 4K line, stacked it, 4K line, stacked it, 4K line. So three uh, 4Ks, I even did four 4Ks stacked on top of each other and, and ran that and didn't have any problem, uh, which was pretty darn good. So I'm running that, I'm, I'm basically running across the screen with the pointer, kind of like doing a quick preview, hit the play button, stop button, play button, stop button, and not have any type of lag or shutter along the way. However, when I did do it one time, I had Lightroom in the background open. I didn't realize I had that open and tried some of that with like, like a three, so three stacked on top and it started to shutter. So it started like skipping frames basically. Uh, and I was like, hmm, there is a problem with this thing. And that's when I realized how Lightroom is open. Uh, I checked my activity monitor and noticed that Lightroom was sucking in some RAM. So didn't realize I was up went ahead and shut it off and continued back on to Final Cut Pro, had no problem. So, um, for all intent and purposes, this machine, the M2 Mac Mini with 16 gigabytes, 256 storage, will do probably what I need it to do just fine. 4K video for YouTube, 4K video stuff, putting stuff together for my family stuff. I thought, I thought I'm good. That's the way to go, right? And then I kept thinking about it and watching more of these YouTube videos that you're probably watching the same stuff going, should I got more memory? Should I go ahead and go on to the pro? I'm not thinking about the future. So let's talk about the future when it comes to future proofing. And I hate that word for different devices. And there are certain things I guess you can future proof for these kind of devices here, the MacBook Pros. I do kind of use them until they don't work anymore. 
meaning like I had an older uh, MacBook Pro uh, with the Intel stuff with i7, I think it was back. And when I started doing 4K video on that, it just started beach balling all over the place. And it was pretty much impossible to work with to get through a video to make a video that was any type of weird fun to do. It becomes like a huge headache at that point. So that for me is when a computer pretty much to me is like, that's it. That's I'm done with that. Uh, time to move on, time to upgrade. That's how I'm going to treat this one right here. Once it starts slowing down and can't handle the, the footage that I have for that day, uh, that's when I'll look into maybe getting something else to replace this. I don't have 8K yet and I, have, I don't have 8K camera yet. I'm sure one day I will, but that day's not here yet. So that's when it comes to future proofing. And that's why I might be changing my mind about the this guy here and going ahead and bumping up to the pro. Do I need it? Probably not. Do I want it? Yes. And it's not just future proofing. Again, so what I mean by that is that I know my cameras are going to change. I know my cameras are going to increase in their quality of footage. Uh, my GoPro now does 5K. Uh, the Insta360 X3 does 360 uh, 5K video. Um, I would love to get the one inch, which would be even more data it has to process. All these cameras are going to get more and more complex. They all going to compete with each other. Sony's already got 8K in their cameras already. So I'm sure that's coming for me down the road. So when that does switch over and I go to 6K, 8K, whatever it is, these might struggle with two 8K lines, that kind of thing. And this guy will struggle before uh, my MacBook Pro here. Uh, just because the way it's configured, I think, with the more cores. That is a little bit of future proofing. So the other it thing about me, and maybe it is for you too, tell me if I'm wrong, uh, it's a little bit of confidence. Confidence in the device you have. So when you start putting your video together and you start stacking your videos and you have music involved, LUTs involved, all that kind of fun stuff, in the back of your head are you going, hmm, is this thing going to handle it? Is it going to start to kind of beach ball on me? Is it start to slow down? Is it start to shudder along the way? It's going to skip frames. Uh, how much more can I push it before it like, eh, it just takes too long. If I, if I dump a noise cancellation into one, if I dump a stabilization into a clip, how long is that going to take to render? And then you think to yourself, maybe a year from now, I'm going, man, I should have gone ahead at the time and just got the better one because I'm always going to think about it and regret it. And that's where I am right now. I am in a position where I thought I bought the right one and now I have a little gear envy and I am switching. So I'm still going to do this entire video with this guy here and let you know at the end if I have any issues with it at all putting this video together. If it's smooth, perfect, fast, great, I'm going to tell you that. If I have any type of shutter at all, I'll tell you that too. Okay, that being said, I did order the M2 Mac Mini Pro at its at, at the at that base level. So 16 gigs, 512, nothing more than that. I got it off the education site, so they like it was 12 1270 something with tax um, shipped to me. That's coming tomorrow quick to kind of change it up to talk again more about uh, what Mac Mini to pick and why and I come to this thought as I was driving to work today before I put this video together um, that it's kind of like having a sports car so why do people buy like fast Mustangs 5.0s or Corvettes or even Ferraris that kind of thing uh, will they always go that fast are they allowed to go that fast no uh, they do it just because they can if they want to and that's kind of like what some people buy these different style of computers for they get all that horsepower and all that ram just when they sit down at that computer they feel like this thing can handle anything i can throw at it and never have a doubt that what they're going to put down is going to work out so that's kind of like a little bit of my reasoning too of getting the pro versus sticking with the basic so it's kind of like getting a Honda Accord it'll do its job a little bit slower but it'll do it but if you get something a little faster you can do it quicker uh, and you have that confidence like I can kick ass 
that's just my thought. So we'll go back to the studio and finish this out. But I want to throw that comment in real quick. And now that you see this beautiful first snow of Maryland that we got. Such, such heavy snow. But it's nice, it's not that cold. And it's just a good dusting to make things look pretty. So another test that I did on the um, MacBook Pro versus the M2 Mac Mini 256, 16 gigabyte of RAM. I did a Final Cut Pro uh, noise noise reduction test. I took a 45 second clip and I, and I plugged in or dropped in noise reduction. Now noise reduction seemed to take the longest rendering time for me on my MacBook to process that type of thing. Uh, stabilization takes a long time too, but noise reduction seems to take the longest. Uh, so that was a good test to see how fast it could render. This guy could render over this guy. Uh, so I dropped them in, started uh, the stopwatch. I'll show you here what it, what it came out to. So the 16 inch MacBook Pro came out to four minutes and 35 seconds to take that file and completely render it. And then the Mac M2 took one minute 47 seconds so we're talking 12 second faster is that worth it is it enough for me no that is kind of why i'm thinking that the pro can do a better job of rendering that noise cancellation clip faster so again i do have the m2 mac mini coming in the mail tomorrow so I'm excited about that. We'll, we'll open it up, we'll get it all rocking and rolling, and then we'll come back and see how it is. So if you're trying to decide which Mac Mini you should buy for yourself, um, a lot of people come out and they tell you which one you, you should get, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you're, I really can't tell you exactly which one unless I talk to you or you tell me what you actually do uh, with the computer and what you hope to do later on with the computer, not just right now. Again, if it is just having a home computer to do office work, nothing to do with video editing, all that kind of stuff, then the $499 education price is the desktop to get it if you want a desktop and not have a laptop. That is the one to get. The 256 could creep up on you if you keep this thing several years because eventually, eventually, your kids are going to put stuff on there, you'll download documents, you'll download stuff over time, and that will eat up very fast nowadays. Uh, just realize, for like iPhotos, if you don't put that on an external drive, that's going to get full quick. That's going to take a lot of... look. If you have a Mac right now, go look and see how much your, your libraries, how many gigabytes that is taken up right now. That would kind of give you a good gauge on what size of memory you should get. I have moved mine all to an external because I'm sick and tired of all that, all those photos taking up so much memory on my on my computer. So maybe you go to 512 and you stay with the 8 gig. Now, if you get into video editing, this is where it always creeps, right? I would recommend at least 16 gigs of RAM for video editing, so you don't buff into that uh, or swap into the SSDs too much. I would still want the 512 to get the faster SSD speed and there you have a nice, right there. So 16 gigs, 5, 512 uh, with this guy is good. But you're there, you're in that point of, this is where I was, right? Do I go there, what, it's about what, 800? Something like that? Oh well, man, I'm, now I'm getting close to the, uh, the Pro price. Should I go a little bit more and I get two more ports, you get a, like a better HDMI for later on if you want to, get to hook up an 8K monitor and you get more more cores so you get a faster machine. Yeah, so that's how they get you, right? And then you go there and you're like, what well, do I add on to that? Do I go to the studio? So I don't think you go to the studio unless you're doing some major, major work. Like you really have a lot going on that you know you need to push these devices. I think the pro is kind of like the sweet spot between uh, the professional and the hobbyist, which is pretty much what I am. Enough of me blabbing. If you're still watching, you'd like, subscribe, and come back for the giveaway, which is on, what, the 17th of February? I think that it is. I'll put it up on there. Thanks for watching, and uh, wish me luck on the pro when it comes in the mail tomorrow.